Assuming you've successfully installed AFNI and downloaded one of the sample data sets, namely AFNI underscore data6, we're going to look within that directory and see some of the data and timing files we need to run the program. Here I've downloaded AFNI underscore data6 to my home directory. So I'm going to CD into there and to LS to see what's in there. Now most of the data we'll be working with is in this FT underscore analysis directory. So if we go in there and we see that we have this FT directory, which has the actual raw data, and then we also have a few of these scripts, which we'll be running later. This tutorial directory just contains uh, text files, similar to what you'd find online, which just guides you through each step of the tutorial. So first let's go into the FT directory, and we see that we have an, an atomical data set, FT underscore NAT, there's a brick and a header extension, Brick is the raw data, or it's the more substantial data. This head is just a header file which points towards where the actual data is located in this brick file. We also have this av1 underscore vis.txt and av2 underscore aud.txt. In this experiment, there was a visual and an auditory component, and it was a block design. So they would show or expose the participant to 20 seconds of visual stimuli and then 20 seconds of auditory stimuli and switch between them. So it's a block design because we have a long period of time with only one condition. We're going to type cat for concatenate and av1 underscore vis just to see what's in there. So the way to read this, there are a couple different ways you can have timing files in AFNI. This is one of the formats. So in this case we have three rows. And this first row shows at what time in seconds the visual stimuli were presented. So at 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, 180 seconds, 240 seconds, in the first run we had visual stimuli being presented. Then in the second run, the first time that we see visual stimulus is at 120 seconds. And then 150 seconds and so on. And lastly, for the very last third run, at the very beginning of the run, at time zero, in other words, we had the visual stimuli presented. If we look at AV2, you can see that it fills in basically all the gaps left in by AV1. So it's zero seconds, 30 seconds, and then 60 seconds. Okay, we have stimuli. So auditory, auditory, then a visual, 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 auditory, visual, auditory, visual, auditory. So just be thinking about that mentally and how these multiple timing files will integrate with each other. Right now we only have two, but with more complex designs you'll have several different conditions which each have their different timing files. Lastly, just open up AFNI to take a look at the data. So it's going to automatically load this anatomical data set. Okay, nothing too surprising there, just make sure it looks okay. If you click on underlay, you can open up each of these other or sorry, functional runs. So that was an anatomical data set, these are functional runs. So just click around on it, just make sure that it looks relatively clean. And just for the record, if you haven't seen a functional data set before, this does look relatively good. It's basically a blurrier image of that anatomical data set we just looked at. That's because functional data has a lower spatial resolution in general than anatomical data sets. Once you're happy with that, we've looked at both our actual data, so anatomical and functional runs, and also check to make sure that these text files, the timing files, make sense and look okay.